Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to That D Plus Show. Class is in session for the only show from that nerdy site that lets you know what kind of quality to expect right there from the name. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and each week I dive into a different Disney Plus offering and discuss its history, how it holds up today, and my general impressions. Uh, this show is made possible entirely by the support of our patrons over at patreon.com slash that nerdy site. So if you like the show and you can support us over there, we would definitely appreciate it. But if you can't, no big deal. The fact that you're listening is awesome, and of course we would love it if you like, subscribe, rate, review, and share the podcast with your friends. Uh, Another solo episode this week, and I'm going to be diving into a little bit more of The Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Last week, uh, if you caught the episode, I sat down with the first four episodes of that uh, animated show from 2010 uh, that featured kind of the introductory episodes for Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and Captain America. Uh, these next four episodes of the series kind of introduce, uh, rounding out the squad, they introduce um, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, in the Ant-Man and uh, the, or the Man in the Ant Hill, uh, and then you get the team finally coming together in the two-parter breakout. Breakout Part 1, Breakout Part 2, uh, and then I, just for good measure, I watched kind of the following episode after the team has come together called Some Assembler Required, which is very much uh, kind of like, hey, they've come together as a team, but they haven't worked out all their problems yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, just kind of a, a I've, I've been playing more of Marvel's Avengers, so I'm still kind of in uh, solidly in an Avengers mood. So wanted to kind of keep going and see really how the team comes together and, and, uh, and all that stuff. Um, uh, if you missed it last week, uh, a little bit of the history lesson here, originally released on September 22nd, 2010, uh, and then it would run uh, all the way up through May 5th, 2013. Uh, one of the little tidbits I mentioned there was kind of the, technically the show ended in November of 2012, but there was a, a, another episode that would have been really a setup for season three that finally ended up airing um, in May of 2013. So that's kind of why... Like, there's different dates between IMDb and Wikipedia on this show. Uh, other notable releases of the time of 2010 there were Adventure Time, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, and Young Justice on the DC side of things. Uh, run times, you know, about 30 minutes per episode. Uh, and, and then in the Disney timeline of things, this was one of the very first Marvel shows on Disney XD after Disney had acquired Marvel in 2009. Uh, it would later be followed by Ultimate Spider-Man, which ran from 2012 to 2017, um, the, this show was pretty much directly followed up by Avengers Assemble, which would run from 2013 to 2019. Hulk and the Agents of Smash ran 2013 to 2015, and Guardians of the Galaxy would come in there and run on Disney XD from 2015 to 2019. Uh, a little bit of the who's who from uh, this show. I touched on a couple people last week um, that were featured in some of last week's episodes, but I'll kind of s focus on the core five Avengers uh, this week, the uh, the kind of starting crew. Um, you have uh, Eric Loomis playing Iron Man. Uh, once again, he has played Iron Man in a lot of the games uh, like Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, as well as um, you know most recently Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Colleen O'Shaughnessy, playing the Wasp, has done a lot of cartoon and games work over the years, uh, including Danny Phantom, and most recently she was the voice of Tails, uh, teased in Sonic the Hedgehog, that film. Rick D. Wasserman, playing Thor here, uh, also kind of plays Thor in uh, the Ultimate uh, Alliance, uh, or in, in Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3. Um, one I didn't touch on last week, but I will highlight here, Fred Tadaskior. Uh, I'm probably messing up his name. Tadaskiore or something. Um, he plays the Hulk here, and he is one of those very quintessential additional voices kind of names in gaming, in, in cartoons, in, in film, and all that stuff. Um, but some of his more notable roles, uh, recently he played Don Corneo in, uh, in the Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, he also plays Zur in the Destiny series, Damon Baird uh, slash the DBs in uh, the Gears series, and in Overwatch, he is the voice of Soldier 76. Um, and he has like 700 plus other credits to his name on IMDb. So yeah, he's he's got some got got crazy range over the years. Uh, Wally Wingert, uh, another one I did not cover last week, um, but is is highlighted here, plays Hank Pym. Um, 
Uh, he is uh, Modok in many of the games as well. Um, uh, not uh, Marvel's Avengers, which you know features Modok as kind of uh, its its central antagonist here, um, but in stuff like Ultimate Alliance um, and and some of the Lego games, I think he played Modok and uh, and yeah, so he, he kind of seems to have that uh, that role uh, locked up in a lot of the um, kind of extracurricular uh, stuff. But he also notably played the Riddler in the uh, Batman Arkham games, uh, as well as uh, the the thing that is like his, you know, number one credit on IMDb, like in terms of popularity, I guess, is uh, he was uh, in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. He played Rufus Shinra. I don't believe he came back and played Rufus in uh, uh, in the remake, though. Um, so just the uh, just the Advent Children film. Um, so yeah. Uh, diving into a few more little trivia tidbits. Uh, this, the first episode here, The Man in the Ant Hill, really highlighted this little piece of trivia that I did not include in last week's episode. Um, but uh, it, it, there was a, a little bit there that mentioned how the show debuted on Disney XD in the fall of 2010, starting with 20, quote, micro episodes, which are actually the first five episodes broken down as a way of capturing that feeling from the comics uh, in Avengers number one and the Avengers 2012 live action film, even though that had not come out yet, um, where you see superheroes uh, with established worlds and adventures on their own embarking on a superhero team up of epic proportions. So I say this was much more prominent um, in in this run because uh, in The Man in the Ant Hill, like you get kind of the um, Hank Pym and and Janet Van Dyne storyline uh, with with uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, and they kind of have their little sequence, and then like it just completely cuts away from them for like the last you know five ten minutes of the episode and turns into a you know a Black Panther mini episode. So it's like the those two heroes basically got combined. Whereas in the other episodes previously, it was pretty much like here's the Iron Man episode, here's the Hulk episode, here's the Captain America episode. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, it was just like, it, it amused me, um, that they just kind of, uh, like this one was like, well, we don't really have enough for a full episode here. So here's, you know, two little bits. Um, and so that micro episodes thing really, uh, really stood out there. Um, a couple other little trivia bits here um, from some of the specific episodes here. In Man in the Ant Hill, uh, the four mercenaries that accompany Claw are modeled after uh, four characters from the film Predator, 1987. They are Dutch, which was, of course, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dylan, which was played by Carl Weathers, Blaine, uh, Jesse Ventura, and Billy, played by Sonny Landham. Uh, and then in the episode, Some Assembly Require, this was a, a cute little thing that I did not catch in my first viewing that I had to go back and, and double check. Um, but that episode ends with uh, kind of uh, the big bads be, uh, of that episode being revealed to be the Enchantress and Scourge. Uh, and at the beginning of the episode, when Pepper and the Hulk are waiting outside Avengers and Mansion, they pass by kind of incognito in, in like in, in costume, like dressed up in disguise basically they walk by so establishing or kind of foreshadowing their presence later in the episode they were there the whole time effectively uh, and that was a, a cool little thing um so yeah that's a little bit of trivia on these episodes uh, as far as the episodes themselves um i uh it's this is this was the fun place where it was it was like exciting to kind of branch away from the mcu idea of these because we got you know, characters like Ant-Man and Black Panther introduced far earlier um, in in this series than they were in the uh, the film uh, interpretations of everything. Also, the fact that we're getting Hank Pym as Ant-Man here rather than than uh, Paul Rudd, Scott Lang, is another little uh, interesting dynamic. Um, but yeah, I, uh, the and and also in the Black Panther side of things, um, uh, it there's there's certainly um uh like a an echoes of what would become the black panther film in that um uh the black panther is challenged by umbaku um uh man ape uh but uh in that he man ape wins um uh, and that ends up being what kind of is the demise of t'chaka which leads to t'challa um taking on the mantle of black panther and the throne in wakanda 
Um, uh, so it was cool kind of getting to see those little sides of the story. And in this, um, you know, Hank Pym is very much, um, you know, scientist in his prime, um, but he's working with S.H.I.E.L.D. on some things, whereas obviously the MCU, Hank Pym, is very, you know, against S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, from kind of his opening scenes in that film. Um, yeah, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And then you eventually get kind of all of the Avengers assembling there in Breakout um, in... Um, in somewhat similar circumstances in that like a big bad kind of comes in and and these you know guys are brought together not necessarily out of choice but just because like they're the only ones that can really step up and do it um and i liked that hulk is going into this series kind of much more perceived as a monster as a bad guy uh, and it's really like banner uh, banner effectively like makes a deal with hulk in his own mind to say like hey you can turn this around you can be one of the good guys and hulk basically who is much more vocal in this than early uh mcu hulk was uh kind of negotiates and says okay i'll help them out but the deal is i get to stay hulk um and and you know banner has to kind of um uh kind of stay away for a while and so um that very much kind of comes to pass in these episodes uh and hulk you know comes in saves the day is very much like a pariah in uh in in the society but the the avengers all kind of stand behind him and say like he just saved the day so we've got his back um and if you have a problem with that you got to go through us um uh i liked the the idea that gets set up kind of through a lot of the introductory episodes is, you know, all these supervillains are already being put in like supermax prisons and stuff. Um, my my favorite little bit was the um, the the supervillain or the the um, was the big house. I think is the the prison that is effectively like using Ant Man's technology, and so everybody is like teeny tiny in there, um, uh, and that kind of gets introduced with the uh, the bad guy of Cyclone. Um, that Ant-Man and the Wasp fight and then kind of imprison. Um, and it's it's just kind of like, oh, that's a clever way of doing that. Also, obviously, you have the cube, which was mentioned in, in previous episodes, and that's where, like, the Gamma stuff was happening. Um, the Raft gets name-dropped, and I, I'm forgetting the fourth um, kind of place. But the what happens in the breakout is basically all of the security at all those places fails, and also all the bad guys start escaping um, and the big bad ends up, uh, for at least the sake of this two-parter, ends up being um, Graviton, or Gravi- yeah, Graviton, Gravitron, I don't remember. Um, and I was like, <laughs> that's that's an interesting choice to be, like, the, you know, the world-ending threat that brings the Avengers together in this cartoon series, um, especially because I think my only other introduction to this character was, I believe, in Agent Carter. I think he was, like the bad guy um basically gravitron can control gravity which you know when you think about it is a very powerful power um because as he kind of even touches on here he could you know um uh, eliminate you know the the uh gravity holding people to the earth and send them flying into space or he can you know basically drag them down to the the earth's core effectively um uh, and so like eh, kind of like he, he is certainly at least set up as a formidable threat um, and, and has the Avengers on their ropes until Hulk somehow starts, you know, overpowering Graviton's, Gravitron's um, abilities and stuff um, and, and is able to kind of break through because, you know, he's the Hulk, I guess. Um, uh, but it was, a, it, you know, it's, it's, it was a fun two-parter, more so, I think, even just because, like, you have so many of the other villains there kind of being introduced in the background and uh, in, in shots and, and kind of they're all breaking free now. I think 74 villains are kind of uh, are, are what is mentioned uh, in the episode and, and the, them capturing Gravitron at the end is one of them. So one down, 73 to go, uh, which I love then immediately gets kind of paid off in... Um, uh, in in the some assembly in the open like the cold open of some assembly required where mandrill uh kind of a, a you know a baboon kind of creature uh that was introduced in one of the 
the other prisons uh, is kind of like doing a bank robbery or something like that. And the Avengers kind of like show up one by one. And like the first, you know, when the Wasp shows up, he's like, I can take you. And then Iron Man shows up and he starts getting, you know, a little more wary. And then Thor and uh, and the Hulk all show up. And so he's like, all, all, all right, I give up. <laughs> and and uh, so without even really having to do any work, the Avengers are kind of like, all right, one down, 72 to go or, or however many it is. So um I, I really appreciate that. And then you have them, you know, some of the staples getting introduced, a little nod to um, Ultron that Hank Pym is working on, which because obviously in the comics, Hank Pym was the creator of Ultron, not Tony Stark as in uh, as in Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, so it's like, well, that's clearly being set up for something down the line, because obviously we know, um, you know, where where that's going to go. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, I love that. Uh, and, and like the fact that Enchantress is in here um, kind of messing with Hulk uh, and then can, kind of coming in and attacking the Avengers at the end of the episode. Um, and she was also, you know, sprinkled in at the tail end of the uh, the Thor episode, which probably would have been like one of the micro episodes kind of uh, in and of itself. Um, I love that that these episodes kind of, you know, cross like there's there's a fluidity between the episode breaks. You know, it's it's not like okay this is the episode that's going to be all about enchantress it's like enchantress gets you know sprinkled in a little bit beforehand and then so you, so when she takes center stage here you know the character because you've seen her a little bit um uh, i really like kind of the the approach that they've done to that um i like that um in the some assembly required you know um uh, there's there's a little bit more um, kind of set up for Black Panther coming into the mix down the line. He has made his way into New York now, uh, out of Wakanda. Uh, and then the episode, of course, ends with Hulk, you know, having, like, feeling he's still a threat and he's still not part of the team. He's kind of walked away, and the Avengers are, are certainly, you know, seeking him out. Um, but while they're seeking him out, he has kind of unearthed or, or accidentally discovered um, kind of Cap's shield. And, and he doesn't realize he's discovered sh- Cap's shield because the camera just kind of, like, zooms over to it after he's walking away. But having already kind of dabbled or, like, caught the beginning of the, the following episode, that's where Cap is going to get, you know, revived and brought into the team. Um, so... Uh, so that's really cool too, and I like, yeah, I just like how um, the show seems to be doing a really good job of kind of um, teasing out things that are going to get paid off in episodes down the line. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's and especially you know while I'm playing the Avengers on on my PlayStation Four, it's fun to just kind of throw Avengers on my laptop and have that going while I'm you know doing mindless grinding to to level up my characters or something like that. Um, kind of getting a, a full-on Avengers fix. So probably just going to kind of keep um, uh, plowing through uh, a few more of the uh, the episodes kind of uh, here and there over the next few days. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't remember what I gave it, what I gave the show last week. Maybe a B, B plus, something like that. Um, I mean, it is a it is a solid cartoon. Doesn't have, you know, the, the highest of the highs um, like that I'm feeling right now off of uh, the Harley Quinn series um, on DC's side of things, just because that certainly speaks much more to my, you know, my enjoyment, my humor. Um, or right now I'm also watching, you know, I rewatched Avatar and I'm, I'm watching The Legend of Korra now for the first time. And I'm a couple seasons into that. And certainly, like, those seem to do much more they're much more focused on like the full season arc storytelling and i don't necessarily from from the vibe of these first eight episodes i've watched of of earth's mightiest uh heroes um, i don't have a great sense of you know the season long arc of the show if it has one it doesn't seem like it has one it does have you know those little peppering moments that that kind of occur throughout but um uh and and you know maybe the arc is what led to all of the uh the shield prisons kind of you know going rogue there who knows um but yeah i'm enjoying it i'm um looking forward to kind of sticking with it so uh so yeah let's go another solid you know bb plus kind of in that territory in terms of uh the show um in terms of uh kind of the the extra credit that we have uh as i said last week here are some other suggestions if you like this one from disney plus um, pretty much all of them are Avengers related. You have the Avengers United They Stand, Avengers Assemble, Avengers Secret Wars, Marvel Superhero Adventures, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy. All of those being like 
the animated versions of their respective uh, franchises, not the, uh, you know, not the the big Marvel MCU kind of films. Although those, of course, are are there for you if you like as well. Well, not the Incredible Hulk and not the Spider Man ones. Those are Sony and Universal. Um, so they are the those are the MCU films not on Disney Plus and that will unlikely ever or that are unlikely to ever be on Disney Plus, unfortunately, unless. Well, no, they, they'll be on Disney Plus when Disney eventually gobbles up all of the other um, giant companies out there because that seems like inevitable. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is going to do it. Uh, I haven't really been, yeah, no, I haven't been watching anything else on Disney Plus. Like I said, um, uh, I, I watched a lot of Harley Quinn and Doctor Who, which you can hear about on this week's um, That and Recite show. Uh, I sat in and discussed kind of... Uh, catching up on those shows uh, and then yeah like i just said i've been watching um you know re-watching avatar or watching legend of Korra on uh netflix right now so um nothing else on disney plus at the moment uh you can follow me online at trevor j starkey on twitter you can follow all of us from that nerdy site over at that nerdy site if you would like to be part of the show, you can go to thatnerdysite.com slash dplusguest and fill out the little Google form there, or just hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you would want to come on and chat about, and we'll try and schedule that out and make that work. Uh, if you liked what you heard, please, as always, like, rate, review, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. And if you do feel so inclined, you can always help us out by supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash thatnerdysite. Basically, all goes right back into the site helps pay for all the podcast feeds helps pay for the website itself um just kind of helping cover costs um so uh so we can kind of keep doing and making this fun stuff uh thank you for joining me as always stay nerdy be good to each other and class dismissed